Now let's go ahead and take a look at some macroeconomic trends. However, before looking at the trends, it's important to take a look at what macroeconomic equilibrium is. Short-run macroeconomic equilibrium occurs when the quantity of real GDP demanded is equal to the quantity of real GDP supplied. In essence, it's where aggregate demand intersects short-run aggregate supply. In the short run, the money wage rate is fixed and does not adjust to move the economy to full employment. And in the short run, real GDP can also be greater or less than potential GDP. Long-run macroeconomic equilibrium occurs when real GDP equals potential GDP. So that's where long-run aggregate supply, short-run aggregate supply, and aggregate demand all intersect at the same point. When the economy is not in long-run equilibrium, the money wage rate will adjust. If the money wage rate is too high, then short-run equilibrium is below potential GDP, and unemployment is above the natural rate. So with an excess supply of labor, the money wage rate falls. If the money wage rate is too low, then short-run equilibrium is above potential GDP, and unemployment is below the natural rate. And with an excess demand for labor, the money wage rate rises. Economic growth results from a growing labor force and increasing labor productivity. In essence, economic growth can be shown by an outward shift in the long-run aggregate supply curve. And as we know, when long-run aggregate supply curve moves outwards, the short-run aggregate supply curve moves outwards by the same amount. So both curves increase. Inflation, however, results from a growing quantity of money that outpaces the growth of potential GDP. So aggregate demand is increasing at a faster rate than long-run aggregate supply. If aggregate demand were to increase at the same pace as long-run aggregate supply, then real GDP would grow without inflation. The business cycle occurs because aggregate demand and short-run aggregate supply fluctuate, but the money wage rate does not adjust quickly enough to keep up with real GDP and to keep real GDP at potential GDP. The output gap is defined as the gap between real GDP and potential GDP. An inflationary gap occurs when real GDP exceeds potential GDP. Full em employment equilibrium is, again I'll reiterate this, is where aggregate demand intersects aggregate supply, short run and long run aggregate supply, and where real GDP is equal to potential GDP. Below full employment equilibrium is when potential GDP exceeds real GDP. Short run aggregate supply and aggregate demand intersect at a quantity of real GDP below the potential GDP. Let's say, for example, that in this economy, we are currently at long run equilibrium, which means that we are at potential GDP. Real GDP equals potential GDP. Now, let's say that for some or the other reason, aggregate demand increases. For example, let's say the quantity of money is increased really quickly. Well, now we have an increase in the price level. And if we have an increase in the price level, workers are going to demand higher wages because their real incomes have gone down, so they want more money so they can buy the same amount of stuff. So real wages will increase, and so short-run aggregate supply will then increase again. And we've restored long-run macroeconomic equilibrium at the point where short-run aggregate supply, aggregate demand, and long-run aggregate supply intersect. And so you can see on the other graph that we are back where real GDP equals potential GDP. But let's say for some or the other reason, aggregate demand decreases. Let's say that exports decrease and imports increase. Well, then we have a re reduction in the aggregate demand. And as we can see on the other graph, we're actually in a trough um, in the business cycle. And this is because real GDP is less than potential GDP. And so what happens is that the money wage rate, again, it adjusts. It adjusts and we restore full employment equilibrium. Supply shocks are sudden increases in the prices of the factors of production that firms use to make their goods and services, and this will reduce short and aggregate supply. However, short and aggregate supply will return to normal once the price of the factor of production returns to normal. It will not, um, like aggregate demand will not adjust to fix the problem here. Aggregate supply has to shift. Stagflation is a combination of inflation and a recession as we can see on the graph on the screen right now.